Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It's March 27th, and I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we are here with content producer and birthday boy, Matt Whoa. Roden. Hi, everybody. <laughs> And we have an incredible guest with us this evening, don't we? One of ever. our very favorite people, Harriet Harris, Woo-hoo! is here talking to us about the low road the and low the public. Road. Yes. But we'll get to we'll get to Harriet. We'll get to it because mm-hmm. first we have our top five. Okay, it's official. Stephanie Block, Stephanie J. Block is share yeah. ryan is there is there better news to wake up to on a <laughs> really tuesday not, morning really i don't no. think there is yes so the <laughs> share show which we, we we know is coming coming soon but first it's going to go to chicago it's going to go to the oriental theater at chicago first but we now know stephanie j block is one of the actresses going to be portraying share there will be three similar to what they're doing in With summer, summer the donna summer, summer musical. musical three different actresses all we know about is stephanie j block right now but what else do you need to know <laughs> right now the two-time tony nominee Will be the show will open at the Neil Simon Theater this upcoming fall. Right. Exact dates we don't know yet. They will be announced soon. Um, but it'll be playing Chicago's Oriental beginning on June twelfth for a five week run through July fifteenth. And I can't wait. Wow! I'm so excited. Stephanie J. Block and t- Bob Mackie. I know. I'm gonna have to time my trip to Chicago to make sure I go see some Stephanie. Yes, you do. So yes, I, you do. But that's amazing news. Can't wait to see. Um, Runaways is returning to the public. Beth. Okay, first of all, Runaways is a fabulous show. Elizabeth Swatos. Incredible. This is for their 40th anniversary gala. Am I saying this correctly? Mm-hmm. We have a lot of people from the public theater in the room, people. <laughs> we have reps. Um, and this is, I'm really excited. So this will be at the Delacorte Theater in Central Park on June 11th. Sam Pinkleton, who's so, was so creative yeah. and was the choreographer Tony nominated for a Great Comet, mm-hmm. uh, is directing with choreography by Ani Taj and creative advisement by Janine Tesori. Oh. Oh, someone else Harriet Harris knows. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, this story is amazing because Runaways was developed at the public right. in the 70s. Amazing, exciting. Such a cool show. And it recently had an encore presentation That's a right. couple of years ago. In case you saw that, you might know about it. Um, the Royal Family of Broadway. We got some casting, and uh, Ryan, this is this is quite relevant. We did. We <laughs> did get some casting for the Royal Family of Broadway today. One of those people is Miss Harriet Harris herself, who I'm sure we'll talk about it with you, all of you. But yes. Don't be sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll We're see. We're not going to promise anything. Um, exactly. So we've known about this, I think, since like October of last year, that they this collaboration from Spelling Bee creators William Finn and Rachel Scheinkin. It will begin previews June 7th and open on June, thir- June 13th and run through June 30th at the Barrington Stage in the Berkshires. In Pittsfield. That's right. <laughs> and joining Harriet Harris are, you've got Kathy Fitzgerald, you've got Will Swenson, A.J. Shively, Arnie Burton, Chip Zion, wow. Haley Punchin, John Rando directing, Alan H. Green is also in the cast as well, and choreography from Joshua Burgos. Bill Finn has been working on this for a for long time. Since like 2000, time. they like had the a first like workshop. Time. A and very it's long ready. time. It's ready, it's ready for, for us for to come up you. and see it yes. in the Berkshires. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Oh, we got some news about the new film, Born a Crime, Beth, that I think we're excited about. We are excited. So you guys know who Trevor Noah is. He's the host mm-hmm. of The Daily Show, now that Jon Stewart stepped out. And he wrote a book called Born a Crime. Yes. And this is the Born adaptation of it. It's a movie adaptation. Uh, it's the full, the full uh, title is Born a Crime Stories from a South African Childhood. Here's the relevant part for the Broadway viewers. Liesl Tommy is directing. Lapita Nyong'o, mm-hmm. Tony nominee. Eclipse. Of course, they work together on Eclipse, that place. So that's exciting. And uh, this, I don't know when it's coming out. Do we know? We don't I know. Don't I don't know. think no, we I know yet. No. I think this is just. And no it, other cast either. No that's other it. cast, right. but you don't need to know anything else because Lupita, the Once goddess got, of the yeah. world, will be in it. And, exactly. And Liesl Tommy is so, so talented. The rest is just fluff at this point. <laughs> Uh, Drew Galing, Drew Galing, who we love from Waitress, has a summer gig, Ryan. Yes, yeah, so exciting. So mm. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Dave. I, um, I have. Uh, yes, I watched I, the preview today. That's that's oh, that was the extended. <laughs> the, the that's trailer good enough. For. Good enough. So it was this 1993 comedy. Kevin Klein starred in the movie, um, and it's about this. He's this guy that works as a temp, and he resembles the president of the United States, who falls into a coma and into a coma. So they pluck this temp to represent oh, him. You're really giving the full plot right? point here. So and Drew Galing is playing that temp slash 
slash resembling guy of the president. Um, and a great team behind the scenes as well. A book collaboration between Thomas Meehan and Mel Benjamin. You've got Tom Kitt doing music, Benjamin Mel Benjamin doing lyrics, Tina Landau of SpongeBob SquarePants directing, and Sam Pinkleton again showing up what to do some choreography. What is going on today that everything's related to everything? <laughs> exactly. And this is happening July 13th through August 19th at Washington, D.C.'s Arena Stage. So we have to go to Chicago? I have to go to Chicago. We have, we have to, to go, go to the Berkshires. Berkshires. We gotta go to DC. We gotta go to DC. And a few <laughs> other little things today. Rocktopia opens this evening Happy at the Broadway Theater. To Happy opening. And Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister. It's gonna be joining that show from April 9th through the 15th. And also Lobby Hero opened last night. Yay. So we talk to the stars, we play a little game, photos, all of that fun stuff. But that's it. That's it for me. I'm gonna get out of everyone's yeah, way. Here. I don't mean to kick no, you out. No, no, please. Hey, Harris do. Is here, please. Ryan. Exactly. <laughs> Matt, tell us about Ms. Harris. I would love to. Harriet Harris was born in Fort Worth, Texas, and went on to graduate from Juilliard, joining the acting company, which she toured with for three years. She worked extensively off-Broadway and on screen before making her Broadway debut in 1992 in Four Baboons, Adoring the Sun. Ten years later, she won both a Drama Desk and a Tony Award for her portrayal of Mrs. Mears in Thoroughly Modern Millie, and since then, she's appeared on Broadway in Crybaby, Cinderella, and It Should Have Been You. She's performed in countless productions around the country, and in films, and on television, most notably on Frasier, playing the suspiciously unethical agent B.B. Glazer. And currently, she's down at the public, playing Mrs. Trumpet and a few other crazy characters in The Low Road. And that is what she is here to talk about today. A few questions for Harriet, and I know that you do. Leave them in the comment section right now, and we'll get to as many as we possibly can. And now, here is Beth and Harriet. Harriet Harris. Hello, Beth. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for Can that. Can you even see me? I realize I'm you blended. In the <laughs> You're just blending in. No, you it's look wonderful. Uh, all right, it's all about it's all about this, I guess. It is. It's all about the face. It's all about the face. Hey, thanks for coming in. Oh, I'm delighted. Thank and I, you. we have so much to talk about. But first of all, I just want to say that this woman's comic timing is amazing. But you don't have to show us right now. <laughs> the it's like low a card road. Trick. You <laughs> have been at the public theater before. Yes. Many times, three times. Three times. All in Shakespeare. 30 and 28 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. A long time ago. Because originally you did a lot of Shakespeare coming out of Juilliard. I was a great classical actress. <laughs> <laughs> but now. And I might be again. We if never the, know. If, if they all One die, then there might <laughs> be room. There might be room. So for you made me. your debut at the public as Ophelia. Is that true? Yes. With Kevin Klein as Hamlet. Yes. So is this like that? <laughs> yes, it's very much like that. Yeah, that was that was fantastic, and that was I, I had worked with a director named Olivier Chule in uh, Minneapolis, where he ran the Guthrie Theater, and so it was it was one of those unexpected things where you think that's going to be the way your theater life goes, as you work with this person, and then they will want to work with you again. Well, they do, but they usually take twenty years <laughs> to want to work with you again. I find, but Levy was willing to do it right away, and so, and I met Kevin a number of times through the acting company that um, mm -hmm. he was a member of. Not at the same time I was, but I was too. So, there was that association, and it was a, it was a. It was a big learning experience, and it was a wonderful, it was a dream to get to be at the public. So now that you're back, does it feel like a homecoming? The public looks very different than it did It back looks then. so different, and it is so different. I mean, there were, there were a lot of things happening then, but it really is, uh, I was talking to Julie about it before, and you, now when you're at the public, you, you feel sort of like you're one of many children. And you get oh. the you get the focus of the parents for a while, <laughs> and then that little troublemaker over there starts you know demanding because focus. there's so many so productions. There's so many shows. There's so m and they and they cycle in and out, and it's just it, but it's very lively and it's a really exciting thing. And you're sharing the green room with different people and and uh, um, different casts, and you, you always think, oh, I wish I could see that show. But it always feels like a really buzzy environment yeah, down it's, there. Yeah, it's exciting. This show has a cast, a huge cast for a straight play, 17 people in the cast, yes. playing 50 parts, and directed by Michael Greff, who obviously is directing musicals. He said directing this was like directing Shakespeare, because there's so many entrances and exits and yeah. subplots. Yeah, you and know things. that line, I think it's in Glen Gary, mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Ross, where I, I think they're, isn't that when they're always talking about always be closing? Always be closing. This ABC. was like always be teching. <laughs> we were, Michael is, 
Michael is brilliant. And he was from the get-go, like figuring out how we're gonna do that, keeping in mind the VOMs and the backstage space, and he's just great. At, you at look like an air traffic controller just now. Well, it's a little I bit of that. Think, I don't again. mean you're dressed like one. Again. It's just a, it's just a hand signal. I thought it was a little Star Trek, <laughs> but it is. Uh, he's just he's he's just got sort of a 3D imagination. He's playing chess on all sorts of levels all the time, and he's a wonderful director in terms of theater and scenes. But how you're going to get things to happen, and how you're going to get 17 people on and off stage, and 54 wigs or whatever <laughs> it is and 149 costumes or it's a lot and and it was just he was teching it from the first day always be teching I always love that. be teching. I love that and of course Bruce Norris the playwright is a wonderfully he's so, so intellectual smart. so smart yes and he and Michael together they're they're very much on the same wavelength so um I think we all felt like if Michael was saying it, then it was he and he and Bruce had had the conversation before. So, because that's what they do, that's they prep, they, do. they prep, and they and tech. tech. <laughs> all right, we have to talk about the recent reunion of Thoroughly Modern Mary. Oh my gosh! It was so much fun. You guys have to go back and find footage of that. Oh well, just it, seeing it was, everyone again. It was the sweetest. I thought it was the sweetest night ever that Millie had. It was oh, the really? opening night was fantastic. Mm -hmm. The gypsy run was fantastic. But it was so lovely to see everybody again and to have people come back to do it. That you cracked really Sutton had Foster up on stage. <laughs> she made a break a little bit because you're so funny in the role of Mrs. Mears. It's a great role. It's, it's a really great role. World. And, and uh, it, it was so fun to have everybody, almost everybody, be able to be back together. It felt like you guys were so loose on stage and relaxed. Well, I don't know if you were. We weren't going to be fired. You know, that wasn't, we weren't going to be replaced. <laughs> we're not going to be fired. That ship had sailed. <laughs> One night only. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the joy of, and that's probably why Runaways will be so fantastic, too, is because it is, you get to bring everything that you have. It was great when the original ensemble, um, they had new young dancers on stage, but then the original ensemble they got had up and. Very young. They very had young. the young dancers, the and young then they dancers. had the very young. The very young. <laughs> <laughs> the babies. Yes. It was nice to see everyone get up and, and move and. Oh and my move. gosh, they're all still kicking and they're all. I mean, it's just it it to me it seems like such a long time ago. But for people who actually take their craft seriously <laughs> and warm up every day and you know are taking classes and all that all the time, they they really do. They're really still able to do all the stuff that they did. But all right, we have to talk about what you're most recognized for. You have the longest string of credits of anyone. Because you work all the time. It's, it's a true fact, people. I'm always looking for always work. Always be checking. Always, <laughs> always be booking. Always be begging <laughs> for work. What are you most recognized for? I assume this changes. Um, right now, I think it's for uh, this movie I did, Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread. Oh, because a so lot good. of people saw the movie. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people talk to me in the street about it. And that's very nice because it was such a great movie. So that... Um, but... Uh, BB certainly and BB um, Glazer, the agent on Frasier and Desperate Housewives. A lot Very different. Of you look totally in the different produce in those section. Two. I think people think <laughs> you know think of me with food and and that character was always peeling an apple or a potato or baking cookies or something. So in the grocery store, that's pretty much what I'm. Can we confirm or deny that BB's character was named after BB Newworth? I don't. I don't know that we that don't is know. true. Mystery unsolved. Mystery unsolved, um, Matt. Yes, I know we have a million questions. We do from all these people who recognize Harriet in the photo yes. aisle. Yes. So go ahead. Okay. So, um, Caitlin wants to know: Is there a dream Shakespeare role that you would love to do in Shakespeare in the Park? In the Park. In oh the park. lordy! I've, you know the ones that I was really thinking I would do, I've outgrown. <laughs> so this is a dream. This is a dream. Now you can dream about yes, anything. Yes. Um, no, I'm. I, 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 the, not really. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, we, we, that, that ship has... No, I love Shakespeare, but there, there, are, uh, there are no roles I'm dying to do. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to do Mad Margaret, but am I dreaming of getting to do it? No. I think um, some of the roles that I really wanted to do, I got to do. Yeah. Like Titania, I really wanted to do it, and I got to do it, and... Um, I also got to play Helena, not in the same production. <laughs> and Ophelia was great. I would love mm. to play Gertrude. Mm. Actually, that, yes, I would still love to play Gertrude. Love that. 
Um, Hamlet would be 65, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you make it work. <laughs> um, David wants to know, uh, he said, love seeing you and Millie twice. What was it like watching the transformation of Sutton from understudy to star? Oh, well, y you know, she was not an understudy when I went in. So, um, but she, I did see, I, I saw the opening, uh, of Millie in La Jolla and I was so struck by everybody, but I just thought, wow, th she's remarkable, whoever that is, <laughs> that's really something. And then uh, a few weeks later, I'd done the first workshop of mm -hmm. it, and Sutton was not in that. And then uh, a few weeks into the run, um, or many weeks into the run, because they kept extending, because the show was so successful, Pat Carroll had to leave, mm -hmm. and so they thought of me, because they knew I knew the line. <laughs> 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 and I would probably be available. <laughs> so, or I would drop what I was doing in order to get to do it. So I got to go in, and I um, was in I had some drugstore and getting, you know, my makeup. <laughs> and this girl in overalls came up, and she said, oh, I'm so glad you're joining the show. And I said, oh, are you in it? She went, I'm Sutton. I think we've all seen those and overalls, Sutton. I thought, you're... <laughs> You're, You're Millie? that <laughs> woman I, that's playing Millie? I no, was she's so, so unassuming. Yeah, well, just, it was, she just is so, she's so lovely anyway. Yeah. But she is um, electric on stage. Oh, yeah. Josh wants to know, he said, you've been, you were so wonderful on Frasier and Desperate Housewives. If you could join any TV show right now, what would it be? Are you a TV person? Um, I don't, I, I, I yes and no. No. <laughs> No, if I will watch. If I'm on it, I'll watch it. Great. If do my friends are it? on it, I'll watch do it. Do you catch old Frasier episodes? Will you watch them? I don't watch them, <laughs> but I know they're on, and I'm thrilled that they're on because <laughs> I really loved. I loved that whole group of actors, and uh, and the writing was so great. But and if they do a reboot, would you join? It <laughs> If you're asked to join, would you join? I think they would have to do a number. I mean, I was hardly ever there. It so feels I, like you were always there. If they, were, if, they, if they did one show, I don't think they would ask me. If they did a number of shows, they might ask me. And, of course, I'd do it because it, it was a blast. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, David wants to know, any previous roles that you'd like to revisit now that you've had some distance from it? Juliet. Definitely. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, you want to leave them sort of where they where they lie. I think so. I've done Hedda Gabler a couple of times when I was younger, and I did get to play Titania a couple of times. And uh, it's interesting to revisit something. I got to play. Maybe I'd like to do Amanda again in Glass Menagerie. Yeah. Are there any writers that you'd like to work with again? Besides Bruce Norris, you Besides mean? Besides Bruce Norris, obviously. Of the wonderful Low Road. The Low Road. Um, I'd love to do more Williams. I'd love. I'd still do anything that Paul Rudnick ever wanted me to do. I mean, can I we would just talk about Jeffrey for a second? He's just that was the funniest man in the world. Paul Rudnick is a wonderful writer, and I feel like that was really what launched you into into stop me, stop me doing classical theater. You have yeah. Paul Rudnick to thank for the so end of your Shakespeare and career. That, I mean, I'm very lucky. I've had Joe Keenan write stuff for me, and I've mm -hmm. had Paul Rudnick, Joe Keenan, who wrote a lot of those BB episodes in Frasier, and Paul Rudnick. And I mean, it's I've, I've gotten to work with some very Funny, funny writers. And you've and also I gotten to work with some. Of course, would do anything they wanted me to of do. Of course, you've also gotten to work with some actors again and again. Yes, like <laughs> David Hyde Pierce. Like David Hyde Pierce. Like Edward I Hubbard. Think, oh, Edward! My God! Yeah, I mean th that is really, really lucky because you, you. That's another fantasy you have when you're a young actor that you'll be working with these same wonderful people again and again and again, and it's just if you have a long enough career, you get to. But. You know, you, not everybody is going to be in the... It's, it's not like the Algonquin Circle, <laughs> where we're all sitting around at the same <laughs> table and discussing what, what jobs we'll do together next. That's probably for the best. Um, Sachin <laughs> wants to know, uh, when did you know that you wanted to become an actor? I let's was go back to Texas. Let's go, <laughs> let's go back. Let's, <laughs> all right, I all will right, if you will. All right, let's do it. Let's, I'm, I'm ready. Um, I was a kid, and I was very shy, and uh, one of my godmothers told my mother, you can't be shy in Texas. She's, she's going to, you've got to bring that child out of herself. <laughs> so they sent me to acting school. And, and I thought, this is so much better and more comfortable than being me. I like it. 
so you know, I, you, that's, that's when I That's the first time I've heard you have a Texas accent. You're, you don't sound like you're from Texas most of the time. Well, I'm far from Texas. But, but so I are am. other people who <laughs> sound but like I, they yes, are. I've, I've still got my boots. <laughs> <laughs> um, Abby wants to know, she said, uh, what would you say was the best advice you've been given to help you get to where you are? Uh-huh. I wouldn't be where I am if I'd taken the good advice. <laughs> I took the bad advice. <laughs> I guess your bad advice. <laughs> I took the very bad advice. Um, I think that people, you want to, uh, I was thinking about this the other day. You want to try to not be part of the problem. And that's something that I think a lot of actors get frustrated and they start picking things apart instead of thinking what will make this better or maybe I should listen to the director or maybe I should... Uh, try to do what they ask of me first. Be prepared to do anything. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to do what you want to do. Um, and if, if what they want you to do fails, or it just you, you just have to read the room. You can't storm in thinking um, that your way is the only way. Because Especially there are when so you're in a cast of 17 at the public theater. <laughs> Come in and do your own thing. I don't know. No, I mean, <laughs> that, that really is, that production is directed. We are, there's nobody doing a star turn in it, and we, everybody is um, feeding the play. And it's a great play, and I hope everybody comes to see it because it is thoughtful and interesting, and it's not didactic, and it is not really- Not boring. No, it is certainly not boring, and it does ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. and doesn't necessarily say, and this is the way to live, but it does ask you to, to participate in conversation about what what is what is a better way to live all right i have two more questions tova said hi harriet my theater group is performing it should have been you in a couple weeks and oh, we good. always look to you and the amazing broadway cast for inspiration any advice for us oh i i think what what david hyatt pierce uh instigated with us is it was um he made us play volleyball a lot and what? i'm not gonna say play volleyball you played volleyball with time daily <laughs> <laughs> That's the headline here, people. That's the yeah. headline. <laughs> Edward Hibbert <laughs> played volleyball. That's truly the David headline. David Pierce was just, it was his first time directing on Broadway, so he said volleyball. Well, That's how I we're think he start. really, he I, I think teamwork. he believed in that. And it is, it's, uh, that's when things are exciting is when it's a team. Yeah. And that's the bad advice I can give everybody because that doesn't, you know, I think it can turn people into, if what you're looking for is stardom, I don't know how you get that. If you want to be a really good actor, then you have to deal with who's, who you're with. Mm -hmm. You have to play volleyball. Then you have to be willing to play sports, even though <laughs> one of the reasons you're an actor is because you couldn't play <laughs> right, sports. Right, exactly. Um, and the last thing, we're getting a very special request from our staff photographer. Oh, you want a song. Talk about <laughs> to talk about the bees. The bees? In the low road. I don't think I should talk about the I don't the think bees. so either. We're not going to give I that away. I, but you might mm -hmm. want to come just for that, just, <laughs> just for the bees that dare not be named. Wow, if, if that's not a plug, I don't know what is. Harriet, thank you for being thank with us. Thank you. Matt, will you take us out, birthday I boy? Be happy, happy to. Birthday, thank you, Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you guys know the deal. We do this live every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you want another way to consume this show, we release this as a podcast every single day right after Live at 5. So be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. The Live at 5, a daily Broadway podcast. Thanks for all the birthday love. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.